Hello my soccer universe, City have done it, they completed the travel, they done the first Champions League and boy was that a lucky win. I would even go as so far, yes all three Italians have lost their final but I would go even so far. The City's win was probably the luckiest of all three in these finals. Boy, 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 boy. And you got a feel for Inter. A little bit, <laughs> which is really hard for me to do as a Milan fan, but uh, they had done technically everything, everything correct. They played the game on their terms. This was the game that I, in my previous set, there is maybe the slightest of chances, the slightest of chances that they have City play the game on their terms, and then they win it one nil, and still City wins it one nil. And they were completely let down by their attack. Lula was just Lolo, completely out of it. That's that's the one galling thing that uh, I thought for the most time of of, of the final for about sixty minutes. Lautaro is actually really, really, really bad in this final. He is not himself at all. And then Lukaku comes on, and he was even more beside himself. Being just the clumsy hunk that he is. But uh, that's only one side of the story. I think, uh, in a way, the bigger side is that uh, City just didn't show up. They really did not show up. The nervousness, I mean, the passes that were misplaced. And it's so, uh, it's actually, I was surprised that in the end that had 88% pass completion rate because it seemed like every important pass, be it by playing out from the back, where even uh, Ederson in the first half seemed completely off it. Um, how did that happen? So confident. And yes, uh, we almost had Tinkerman alert also. Uh, it just went well. I mean, this is the one time where I would say luck fell City's way. But it was also a bit of a Belgian tragedy. We already talked about Lukaku, but De Bruyne had to again come off in a Champions League final. Again, this time with a good end for him. But boy, oh boy, oh boy, oh boy, what a, fi what a final in, in a way, way more open than anyone expected. However, was it a great final? No, <laughs> absolutely not, absolutely not. And you'll see the XG stats come up with Inter had a 1.45 XG and City a paltry 0.8 XG. Doesn't speak and it was for most of the time not a great final. But yeah, uh, I want to hit a few highlights before we, we, we do more summaries. I mean, first of all, what, what an atrocious opening show that was. I mean, I already am against all the opening shows and I don't want to go all gramps on you. But please, that was nothing. I mean, A, the sound was ho horrific, but especially the other. I mean, I, I don't even know, don't know, know the performance, uh, so maybe I shouldn't judge uh, too much. But I thought about the uh, uh, girl that was singing. Um, the first shot is just, yeah, I need to show off my butt uh, to the world audience. And I'm thinking, you know, if you show off your body instead of your talent, then I think you're in the wrong industry. And I'll leave it at that. In any case, the finals uh, uh, and also the Champions League anthem, I know that the piano that uh, sounded actually not that bad, but it didn't sound right. On the final, please play it, play the normal anthem. Maybe it sets the CD off already. Um, I think the biggest surprise was in the lineups that um, Guardiola played Arca instead of Walker. And at first, it was rumored that yeah, Walker is probably has an injury, but then uh, um, Guardiola confirms that he's fully fit. Now, maybe if there was an injury, maybe this could have been a concern, uh, even if he came just back. But the way it was framed is that Guardiola wanted to react to the two-pronged attack by Inter. And I'm thinking, why are you doing that? You are the best team in the world. You have to make Inter play to you, not the other way around. For me, the first half, I mean, the first half hour, it was all Inter. Without creating a single chance, might I add. And there were a few ones where... Uh, I don't know what Ederson was, uh, I think he once played a ball that went into the far out or there was this one um, lob in, in a way 
where he goes out, but Lautaro is on the touchline and gets the ball, and then for some reason they don't get it off. Or I think there was 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 a shot by Brozovic, where you think he's from the edge of the box. At least bring it to goal. Don't sky it high. I mean, they could have settled the game relatively early and make City even more nervous. Or maybe this would have been a spark that CC needed. But uh, for as well as interplay, and I think Brozovic was the man of the first half. He was running up and down. He was everywhere. And I really thought uh, him instead of Mkhitaryan, uh, that's also a, a rather rough call because I thought that they're missing a little bit oomph in the midfield. No, absolutely not. The midfield was working hard, they kept the spaces tight, and the way um, the Haaland was dominated by uh, Bastoni and uh, Acerbi, I did not see that happening. And still, the first real chance came just before the half-hour mark, when the ball was played through on Haaland and Onana saves it. Uh, it was not, I mean, it was a good chance, but uh, there was not, uh, it, it, it wasn't a hard save because his positioning was really, really, really good. And then uh, the first part of the Belgian tragedy came that the Kerkegaard brought this something with his hamstring and he had to come off. He was not brilliant. However, I also had the feeling as soon as the Brunner came off, I always had the feeling that the Brunner might get into the game. And then maybe Haaland can get a little bit more connected to uh, the rest of the team. With Phil Foden coming on, that was not gonna happen. Uh, Haaland was like an alien in the entire for, for the entire rest of, of the game he was not there it was also rather good to say uh to see that after the game most city players were rather rather um critical with themselves with rotary saying i've played a horrible game in the first half and uh same thing coming from Grealish. so rather rather uh interesting stuff now uh at the half i think uh Gua guardiola who all decided relax 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 it's not so big, relax. But at the half, he made, I felt he made some tweaks because um, Inter was, I mean, already at the end of the first half, City were more in the game without being overwhelming. Uh, at the beginning of the second half, um, it went kind of a little bit more City's way, except for this one awful back pass where Ederson and Ed Ederson his defenders were not on the same page and Lautaro gets in between runs past he has the ball but he is not aware of his surroundings there was already look uh, uh lukaku was already on uh and then on the on the edge i think there was brozovic there was even better position i mean that was hard hard to see but he had the entire field for himself and lataro chooses to do it him himself when ederson had already closed down the space at that moment, I really had had the feeling um, Inter made tries they want, they will not get a goal here. And then the goal came for Manchester City, where Inter made the one defensive error. And uh, it is so hard to see. I mean, it looks like every, everything sorted, but for once, they allow that Bernardo Silva can, uh, can make the run through the defense. Bernardo Silva gets the ball, it gets then deflected and falls to Rodri. Also because... Um, Di Marco, who has been brilliant in the first half, uh, just uh, decides to continue lying on, 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 on the pitch. The Rodri goal, though, I have to say, A, great that he is the one who scores the goal because, be uh, because of him not being the, in the squad, they didn't win. Uh, or, I don't know, they, they didn't win because, against Chelsea, but uh, there, there, there was the one head scratcher at the 21 final. So uh, that was already cool. But if you look at the shot, how he threads it just past Darmian and Charles Char 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 it's a brilliant shot. It's a really, really brilliant shot, especially from the uh, behind the, uh, the, the, the the player. It is so well threaded there. There was only one way this is going. And City, what felt a little bit out of nowhere, because that game was a stalemate. An absolute stalemate where City did their best to hand chances to Inter. Out of nowhere, they have a 1-0 lead. And I felt that at this point, and I don't want to say it was not deserved in, in the way. I mean, Nova would, would have really deserved the lead, uh, but it came a little bit out of nowhere. But I also felt at this point, that's the game for, for City. 
have an almost e equalized a little a little bit later uh, where a ball falls to Di Marco who uh, out wrestled I think Akanji Akanji is alone against Lukaku and Di Marco it goes to the crossbar comes back and uh, Di Marco can head head it again and who clears it off the line none other than Lukaku and how often have we seen that for him we saw it at the World Cup for Belgium I remember when Inter got to, uh, the second time eliminated from 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 the group three there was a similar free header and Lukaku is just standing there uh, it looks just clumsy because he's so huge. He's so huge. I mean, how can you head there when you have this, this huge guy standing there? <laughs> I'm wondering. It, it's just, it is so Lukaku. It is so Lukaku. Uh, then they bring on Gosens and Bellanova for Bastogne and Dumfries. Dumfries actually had, had, had also seen in the first half, I think, if he's a little bit more decisive, he maybe can create something, maybe. Uh, but yeah, uh, Inter tried. Inter, Inter tried, however, the biggest chance fell to Foden, uh, who brilliantly takes the ball and then uh, runs, shoots at Onana. Onana, by, by the way, I think was also uh, <laughs> the way he, he sees in the ball, and I haven't matched this too, in, too often in my Serie A uh, review videos. But I think when Inter saw that Milan have Mike Menio, Onana does the same for Inter. I want to say that Magnon is still the better goalie, but that was a clear reaction because they knew with Andanovic they cannot continue that. And so, yeah, uh, then it was a lot of crosses that Inter cleared, uh, that uh, City cleared away. I mean, Inter pressed forward, actually made up a whole lot in the pass, in the possession stats, which were already, uh, like before the 1 1 0, not so lopsided uh, as one would have expected. Um, Ederson came up with some, you know, catch, catching ball, being very aware of what's happening uh, quite often. Uh, and then the last big chance fell onto Lukaku's head. This was the one really well-constructed inter-attack where they pass it right, pass it left. Uh, it comes in. It for You have the one player that you want to come on. And you saw it when Lukaku came on in the 57th. How everyone was hugging him. You are the guy who will win it first. No, he was not. Because he had it free header, no one there, no pressure, five meters out, empty net, and what do you do? You head it straight at the goalie. And yes, credit to Ederson for actually getting his foot down and blocking that shot. However, when you look, look at it, I mean, Lukaku needs to place this in one of the corners and it goes in. What a letdown. What a letdown and what a shocker Lukaku had. Part two of the Belgian tragedy. Uh, lay, lay, lay down. I mean, they got the corner laid on that looked dangerous, but in the end it was cleared off and then see the players celebrate running and you could see the relief on, on, on the faces. I mean, the longer the game went, I think the better City were in the game. However, it was not their game. I think it was also epi epitomized that you saw how that um, uh, couldn't really believe that he just won the trophy that he have, has always set out for. But he was so... I mean, every uh, most CC players went and touched the trophy. Haaland just walked by like he didn't deserve it. Even when, when they lifted the trophy afterwards, I had a real feeling that... Uh, I mean, I had to look for Holland a little bit. He's standing there in the background away. He was he was as invisible during the celebrations for me as he was during the entire game. Interesting. Interesting. I also liked how Guardiola on the side was standing and kind of watching. Yeah, guys, you did it. You did it. I don't know how you did it, but you did it. Um, this was a win for City over the entire tournament. There is no discussion. The City were the best team in Europe and they deserve to win this title. On the night, I am not so sure. If Inter had a little bit more on offense, I think Inter, they would have gifted Inter the title. Out of, out of, out of nowhere. I really have to say that. Uh, on the flip side, you know, if Inter had anything offensively going for them, because Inzaghi really prepared the team well. They were so good. Uh, it, it defensively without being defensive because in the first half they did so much they 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 really high press they made it uncomfortable for City they actually played the inter game they were not ultra defensive 
they just kept the spaces tight. But it was never that it was an onslaught by a city. It was Inter who was actually mostly in midfield. Everything was hap happening and Inter made it hard for City. Harass them left and right. And if you look at the final stats, I mean, it all goes in Inter's favors. They had more, they had more clear chance changes, they had more at attempts. The only thing is possession and completion uh, and passes that went City this way. And you would have said that, that that's a given. Their, st um, their stats are not even that great. It was really, really uh, hard to lose that final for Inter. And I'm looking right at the, I mean, in the first half, Lautaro was kind of trying to link up with Jacob, but Jacob never got in, into the game. The same way as Holland never got into the game. And then when you had the threat with Lukaku, and there's maybe an arg argument to be made that Lukaku should have started. But honestly, I think this, it, they have been playing this uh, game so long because it was actually good to have a little bit of a tired team and then have Lukaku ru ru running at you. But you gotta make those chances. You gotta make those chances. And I'm looking especially at the two stars with Lautaro and Lukaku. That did not work for Inter. And you have to look at, at yourself and say, yeah, this was, this was your big chance. And you saw it after the match. I mean, you saw how Onana had to cheer up Lautaro. Lautaro def that 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 is gonna think about it. And uh, Lukaku had another shocker. This will stay with you. This will definitely, definitely, definitely stay with you. And so as I said, in, in the end Italy loses three finals. That is some I mean, it doesn't come as a total surprise to be honest, because I was actually thinking, yeah, uh, it's gonna be hard to win one trophy. Um But I have to say that uh Inter Roma blew it. Mourinho's tactics blew that final. Because Roma should have won that, that, that they won. Fiorentina was unlucky. Because West Ham just had a little bit more stamp stamina and they didn't convert their, their chances in, 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 in a way because Fiorentina were, were the better team in that final. It's hard for me to say who was the better team in that final because offensively Inter didn't create much. But so did City. However, when I just look at the chances that Inter missed, none of the other teams had just such chances to convert and win that game. In that sense, uh, Inter threw that away. But I also want to mention that Guardiola is now the first coach to win two trebles with two different teams. It's only the second treble for an English team, although for me that's, that doesn't mean all that much because trebles have been done everywhere yes maybe in england it's a little bit more competitive than, than else elsewhere but um i think the travel talk for me is over uh stated in a way uh it's also that manchester are not only the second t uh, city to have uh two champions league winning teams the other one milan of course so that's maybe also in interesting. Madrid should have probably joined in that uh, <laughs> in that part of it as well. The M cities, it's the M cities in Europe that are the real soccer powers. So yeah, I think I'll leave you here. Um, the club season is almost over. There will be two review videos coming from me from uh, yeah Netherlands, France, and from Italy. But more or less, the season is done. We have City, the champions. Um, European champions, the best team in Europe. We don't need to argue about that. It will be interesting how, how they will go do moving forward. But in any case, please let, let me know what you thought about the final. Give me a thumbs up if you enjoyed this video. Subscribe to my channel and see more. Talk to you soon. Bye. Hey there. I really hope you enjoyed this video. And if you did, here are some videos and playlists that you might enjoy too. Also, please consider subscribing to my channel and hitting the little bell icon so to get notified whenever something happens in my soccer universe. And with that, have a wonderful day. Bye!